Hello everyone. In this session, we will discuss the internal control. You will study this topic much more in depth in your auditing course. In financial accounting, we'll touch upon internal control very briefly. Specifically, in this session, we will introduce the concept of internal control and specifically the purpose of internal control. What does internal control serve? In the real world, internal control within each company is extremely important. If internal controls fail, a company would risk fraud, financial misstatements, regulatory violation, and operational inefficiencies. This leads to a loss of trust, lack of accountability, and potential collapse due to poor decision-making, legal issues, and reduced profitability. Many fraud and embezzlement cases, including financial misstatements, were due to poor internal control procedures. A case in point, a company called Enron, among many others. It's beyond the scope of this course. Just know that internal control is very important because without it, the company would collapse from within. Now, what are the key objectives of internal control that we need to learn about in this session? There are four key objectives for internal control. The first one is safeguarding assets. Simply put, protecting the organization assets from loss or theft. Two, ensure reliable financial reporting. Ensure that the financial information, the financial statements are accurate, complete, and timely. And this is what we are concerned with the most as accountant. Promoting operational efficiency. Ensuring that, res that resources are used efficiently and effectively. Last but not least, compliance with laws and regulation, making sure that the organization complies with applicable laws, local rules, procedures, and regulation. And take all these controls taken together maintain the integrity of the organization's financial and operational system. In this session, we will cover each objective of internal control separately, providing explanation and examples. Let's go ahead and get started with the first objective, protecting the assets. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. One of four, protecting the asset. Well, it's basically safeguarding, physically safeguarding the company's asset and financial resources from theft, misuse, and damage. How do you do that? Well, you have fences, you have locks, you have security cam cameras. A company would install security surveillance cameras, secure locks, hire security guards, and other things to prevent unauthorized access to its facilities. For example, a retail store use electronic tags on merchandise and have security personnel at exits to deter to stop shoplifting, which is stealing. Financial security, implementing a strict access control to the financial system. Why? Because through the financial system, you can make payment, you can transfer money, and that's important. And you want to conduct regular audit to prevent unauthorized transaction and financial fraud. You don't want to allow anyone to log into the banking system of the company. Well, wire money, make payments, pay employees, so on, so, so on and so forth. So this is one purpose of the internal control is protecting the asset. Purpose number two, as I told you, making sure your accounting record is reliable, accurate and reliable. Because remember what we talked about when we talked about accounting is the language of business, business people relies on accounting information to make a decision. That information has to be accurate and reliable. Otherwise, it's not relevant. It does not help us. So that's the purpose of this step. It ensures that financial data is recorded correctly and on time. We want to have the record and on time to make the proper decision. For example, handling cash well a company establishes a system where cash receipts 
are counted by two employees independently and cash registers are, re are reconciled daily. Why do we do this? For example, if you want to reduce the risk of theft, we want to have two employees counting the cash that we received. And we want to make sure whatever we rank in the register, reconcile with our cash position on a daily basis. Why? Because this is going to reduce the risk of errors or theft. So we're not making mistakes. For example, a restaurant might, might have a policy where the managers review and sign off daily cash report to ensure all sales are properly, accurately recorded and accounted for. This is part of cash handling to making sure we have reliable accounting figures, revenues, cash, so on and so forth. Now, when I say an ensure reliable accounting, each account on the balance sheet, and if you're an accounting student, you will, see, you will see later, each account on the balance sheet will have to learn about its internal control. So we're talking about internal control in general. Now we're going to talk a little bit more specific about cash. But when it comes to an auditing course, each account will be dealt with separately. Upholding company policies, that's important. This is making sure that the employee, the people that works for you, adhere to company policies, well, which are often designed to comply with legal and regulatory requirements. Well, you want to make sure you have your own internal policies. Now, your own internal policies cannot conf cannot conflict with the law, the local laws, but you also want to adhere with local laws as well, because if you don't, you get into trouble with the government itself. So, a company implement a system to track employee compliance with its code of conduct. They will have some sort of a system. For example, a simple example of upholding company policies, and most likely, you already went through this when you are hired by a company usually they give you what's called the employee handbook where you have all the policies listed there well this is part of what making sure the employees are aware that's an, that's an awareness awareness of what awareness of the company's policy or they might give you regular training sessions on legal compliance and a, and a system for reporting and investigating violation they may tell you you know if you see something this is how you would report it. if you see something you know wrong or something bad or something unethical for what purpose they're giving you this training to make sure you're upholding company's policies for example a financial institution will conduct an annual compliance training and has a whistleblower policy what's whistleblower if something goes bad someone can report this information anonymously no one would know about it to management to upper management to people who are in charge of the company without the person above you knowing this that's the third principle or the third goal of internal control the fourth goal of internal control is promoting efficient operation this makes this makes sure that the company's system business processes are cost effective and efficient it means you are doing whatever you need to do without sacrificing quality or performance but with the least amount of resources you want to run the company with the least amount of resources means what being efficient to explain efficiency i always give this example in my class i have two students student a b c and student x y z both students received an a as a grade in the class or for the exam one student study for that exam five hours and the other student XYZ study 10 hours they both got the same thing student A is more efficient than student M um, student ABC is more efficient than student XYZ although the results are the same but from an efficient efficiency perspective it's more efficient so a manufacturing company adopt a lean manufacturing principle to reduce waste and improve production is a form of promoting efficiency we want to have a policy to make sure we have zero tolerance for waste or we want to reduce waste to zero in quote zero you cannot reduce it to zero but reduce it as much as possible this is by implementing an inventory management system the company can minimize excess stock and reduce storage costs that's the whole purpose so if two production lines produce the same number of units but one uses fewer resources due to a better planning and control the second one is deemed more efficient as I just told you about two students studying for an exam well <laughs> to get the A study as much as you want if you want to get an A it doesn't matter but the point is you are using less resources the resources here is your time for the student you're using less time in other words the students that study four hours the assumption is the students work those additional five hours twenty dollar an hour they made a hundred dollar extra so they are more productive
but they got an A at the same time. The other students did not. Now, so those are the four goals of internal control. This is the fourth. Now, the internal control system, uh, we, there's a system called the framework, but not every company establishes their own internal control. There's one framework that most companies in the US and across the globe for that matter follows. And this is called the COSO framework. It, it looks like a cubicle. <laughs> this is what it looks like, a cube actually. It's a framework. It's a reference for companies to follow. So all companies follow the same internal control principles, and there are five of them. Now, five component, five component to be more specific. All companies follow those five components, but the way they apply those five components to their company is different, depending on your industry, depending on your company size. There are many factors. But this framework consists of five key components, and each of these components is critical for the integrity and functionality of the overall control system. And those five components are, the first component is control environment, two, risk assessment, three, control activities, four, information and communication, five is monitoring. We're gonna go e through each one of these components really quick in an audit course, there'll be one whole chapter about this, maybe two chapters about internal control because you have to understand internal control inside out but for us you need to know the overall concept the control environment this is the first principle and this is really an over over acting like it's it covers all the other principle sets the foundation for all other components of internal control providing discipline and structure it's influenced by the integrity ethical values and competency of the people on the top the board of directors it's called the tone at the top a company's leadership including the ceo the board demonstrate a commitment to ethical behavior by establishing a code of conduct leading by example and enforcing ethical policies consistently so the first thing in a company if they don't have an upper level management ceo board of directors that's ethical the whole company will fall apart think about where you work you follow your manager whatever ma your manager tells you you do if your manager is unethical, even though you may not be unethical, but you might have you, you you might have to tolerate unethical behavior because you're working under your manager. And think about if the top management is unethical, that will flow down throughout the company. For example, a CEO who publicly supports and enforces strict anti-corruption policies sets a strong tone for the rest of the organization. So the control environment is important and it starts at the top. Two. Every company, as part of their internal control, they should have a risk assessment policy or program. This is involving identifying and analyzing potential risks. What are risk? Risk is anything that's going to deter you from achieving your goal. What is that? Well, each company will have a different type of risk. An airline company, the risk is an airline falling off the sky. A fast food company, the risk is uh, maybe uh, uh, their food is poison, poisonous, or they get people sick. So this helps, they have to identify it because this is going to help prioritize the risk. Not all risk is the same. Yes, for example, an airline company, uh, maybe they might be short of some employees working at the front desk. That's a risk. But it's not the risk of the plane fa falling off the sky. And I'm giving two extreme examples to tell you, you have to prioritize the risk. Identifying risk, a retail company, for example, conduct risk assessment to, that, to identify potential risk. What could be some potential risk for a retail company? Supply chain disruptions. Why? Because this, the retail company, their job is to sell the product. If they cannot get the product, that's a risk for the company. So they have to manage this risk. They have to say, okay, what if our route to China shuts down for any reason, like COVID, when COVID occurred, you know, China was shut down. Do we have another supplier, another supply chain that we could rely on? Cyber attacks, and this is risk for all companies these days, or changes in consumer preference. What happens if people don't like our product anymore or what we sell? Do we have a plan? This is a risk. You have to identify the risk and analyze it. The company develop strategies to mitigate, to reduce the risk. Like what? For example, if you are relying too much on China and you don't like this, you have to diversify your suppliers. Well, maybe you want to get some suppliers in Vietnam, some supplier in Egypt, some supplier in Bangladesh, and maybe some suppliers from South America. If your risk is cybersecurity, well, guess what? Enhance your cybersecurity measures. Invest with companies that specialize in cybersecurity. 
The third component of the control and of the internal control COSO framework is the control activities. And here you can go forever talking about those activities. Those are actions, steps that are taken actually to address the risk and achieve the objective of the organization. And this is endless. You can have a whole course, a whole chapter about the slide, but we can do that. These include policies and procedures, mechanisms that are in place to ensure directives are carried out. For example, a financial services firm implement control activities requiring dual authorization for large transaction. Let's stop right here. Every time we have to buy something above a certain amount, above 15,000, it cannot go through unless two people review and sign on it. This is a con the control activity is you need the, the you need the signature of two people. Now, why why is this important? Because you want to make sure that the company is not wasting money on stuff we don't need, stuff that we really need. We conduct regular reconciliation. What's reconciliation? We're going to talk about the bank reconciliation later. Reconciliation is when, when you compare two things, A and B. Okay, for example, you want to look at your cash general ledger and compare that to your bank balance and you reconcile the two. Make sure what's in your cash general ledger is the same on the bank balance and vice versa. Why? You're accounting for, ev you're accounting for everything. Same thing with your purchases, your inventory and your sales. I purchase $1,000. If I sold 300, I should have 700 in inventory. You do a regular reconciliation. Setting up access control to sensitive data, making sure, for example, your data is protected through password, through multi-factor authentication, through technological techniques that not everyone can access. So these activities help prevent fraud and make sure accurate financial reporting is achieved. Remember, ensuring reliable accounting is what's important for us. The fourth component of the COSO framework is information and communication. The purpose of this is to make sure we support the capture and exchange of information needed to manage and control the organization operation. Information runs companies. So how do we get the information to the appropriate people when there's a news release, there's an update, training? Well, communication is important. Effective communication ensures that information flows up and down and across the organization. So you want everyone to know about a new policy upper management, lower management, employees across the board. An organization establishes a secure intranet system versus internet. Intranet is an internal system, an internal website to disseminate, to distribute important policies and update to all employees. You could do that also through emails or mails, through emails. <laughs> you can call employees and leave them a message. Uh, whatever the communication you have to get, you have to get that information. Regular team meetings and feedback mechanism, making sure that employees can communicate issues and suggest suggestions effectively. You want to make sure that communication is working. For example, a manufacturing company would use an internal platform to share safety protocols. What are the best way to make sure our employees and our manufacturing facilities are safe? Update with all the staff, making sure everyone is informed and everyone is in compliance because safety is important for a manufacturing company because it's hazardous people could get hurt and the fifth component of the COSO framework is monitoring and monitoring is important what are you monitoring you're monitoring everything else involve regular assessment of the system of the internal control system over time you could set up an internal control system the best one and it could run good for a year but how about year two how about year three well you monitor your own system this helps ensure that the controls are functioning as you originally intended. Because if you told someone, well, every time you need to sign a check for over 15,000, get two approvals. Well, that's on paper. Are they doing so? You want to check and you want to modify any policies as necessary. Regular review is important. An internal audit team, this is where you have an internal audit team, conduct periodic reviews of various departments to make sure the effectiveness, the internal control is working properly. For example, we don't make any sales on credit before we check someone's credit. Well, are we doing that? How do we know this? We have an internal control team and that internal control will check to see if, if every sale we are checking the credit. If that's the case, the internal control is working properly. If it's not, we need to know what's happening and provide controls that we cannot make a sale on credit before checking someone's credit. 
And here the internal control team would provide recommendation for improvement based on what they find. For example, a healthcare organization performs quarterly audit of patient data security control. This is important because healthcare companies, hospital, they need to be in compliance with federal regulation, something called HIPAA. How do we know we are in control? We check every quarter, making sure we are in compliance. If there's any issues, identify those issues and discuss them as soon as possible. So those are the five components of the internal control. So we went through the purpose of internal control. We looked at four purpose. What, what, what's the purpose of internal control? Then as I, as I mentioned, not every company, uh, they have to kind of start from internal control from scratch. Why? Because we have a framework that anyone can use, adopt, and customized to their own needs. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. Internal control system are significant for all the following reasons except. So there are three good reasons and one, you know, internal control is not significant for that. With internal control helps uphold company policy. Yeah, that's significant out. Assuring that no loss will occur. Can an internal control system assures that no loss will occur? I'm not sure if anyone can assure that. I'll keep that answer choice for now. Ensure reliable accounting. Would internal control significant for that? Absolutely. This is especially what we are concerned with. Is internal control significant for protecting assets? Yes, it is. So the answer is out. D is out. As we suggested, comp uh, phrase B is extreme. No one can assure that no loss will occur. No one can do that. Therefore, it's re important, but not. you cannot argue you cannot argue that internal control will assure no loss will occur. Losses will occur, whether that's a business loss or operational loss or logistical loss. Losses will occur. No internal control can prevent. Proper management can prevent, but internal control helps reduce the losses, but not assure no loss will occur. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, additional resources. If you're a financial accounting, intermediate accounting, studying for the CPA, the CMA exam, it does not really matter. Invest in yourself. Farhat is here to help and stay safe.